You can get the guide if you haven't got it already through my coaching website, v121pro.com, um, and get the download link there. Uh, the Snetterton 300, it's, um, it's, it's quite a difficult track to actually draw. You've got, you can do quorums and then into, into um, Murray's, start, finish straight. Ryan Riches up to Montreal, back down to Palmas, and there's a run down with a bit of a kink to Agostini, which is a hairpin, up to Hamilton's, down to Oggies, and there's a right hander onto the back straight. Um, then you go through the S's, bomb hole, and up to um quorums again so that's roughly it anyone who sort of sees that on a on a beer mat will roughly figure out that it's netterton uh, so that's the 300 circuit the quite a few years ago they put in the infield section to create what is the 300 circuit and that also allowed them then to put in some little link roads here which this then creates a 100 circuit, which is just like a basically an infield, so they could run theoretically run two circuits simultaneously, the 100, and then the outer circuit, which is the 200, or get do away with the link roads, and that creates the, the 300 circuit. The 200 circuit effectively does away with the 100 and creates essentially that circuit there, which is round riches up to Montreal. Montreal then becomes essentially like a, a chicane, a very tight right-hander, and then a faster or more open out left onto the back straight. My circuit guide covers the 300, which is the, the larger of the circuits. What it doesn't actually cover, it doesn't cover the 200 in the sense that it covers the majority of the 200 except uh, this section here, and that's what we're gonna talk about in a bit more detail. Yeah, I've been going to Snetterton for, oh, since 1984, so it's gone through various guys. It used to be an airfield, it was converted airfield, and used to have a, an enormous long straight, which took you all the way back down to basically where you come into the circuit, near the A11. And then they went through a few incarnations of um, coming out onto the start-finish straight. They went through various types of chicane and the... The original one I raced at in 84 was a really high-speed chicane, and I thought it was the, the best best one of the lot because you came around Corums and it was a fast run down to the chicane and it was a quick left right onto the start finish straight but I think it was too quick for the cars and there was some fairly big crashes there so they, they tightened the chicane right up and it went through that tight chicane for quite a long period of time and then about five ten years ago maybe they put in what was uh, the current layout which is Corums went round in there was no straight then coming out of Corums, it basically went all the way around Corums and then nipped up at the end, which is Murray's onto the start finish straight. This is a, a simplistic drawing of Montreal Herpin itself and the uh, Bentley straight, which draws it. Now, the, the circuit used to basically come up to a right-hand bench onto the back straight, which was called Sears. I really enjoyed Sears. I hit myself a few times there, but it's a good corner. And what they did is they extended it slightly to create a nice big uh, 180 degree radius hairpin to take you back down to the uh, well the, the 300 circuit. Now the approach is exactly the same whether you're doing the 200 circuit or the 300 circuit. Um, heavy braking, easing back as you're coming in towards the hairpin, trailing it off, basically standing on its nose, get the thing stopped, a little bit of closed throttle to, to let the bike turn in and the, the, the focus really is getting towards right towards the end of the, the apex curve, but using that as, as it were, your apex point. Now, normally from there, you would start to sit the bike up fractionally, pick the throttle up, and then power out progressively to get more and more aggressive on the throttle till you get to the uh, drift out curve, which is out on the left hand side, and then carry on down towards Palmer's. You can't do that hard acceleration like onto the back straight because, of course, you're transitioning from basically from full right-hand lean 
to what is effectively almost full left hand lean as you run out onto the straight itself. So you can do some acceleration from the apex but invariably what you probably need to do is ease back a little bit on the throttle as you run up towards the apex and then wait till you're at the apex of the left before then continuing to develop the throttle out onto the straight keeping an eye out for the drift out curve here. Uh, so you've basically got your apex curve your apex curve of the left and then the drift out curve to, to work out points of reference which work for you and of course all of this depends on what machine you're on if you're on a low power a low capacity machine basically from the apex there you can more or less pin it through the corner up onto the straight because you haven't got a big bulge of power if you're riding something which jumps out of corners you're probably going to go through a period of kind of easing off without closing the throttle and then get to a point where you can then continue that development onto the straight. Anyway, let's go and have a look at it on Google Maps and um, a little bit more of an explanation there with some more lines and drawings, etc. The Snetterton 200 circuit uses the exit of Montreal and this link section here, linking up what is effectively the 300 circuit, which comes round Montreal and then down towards Palmas. And it links that up with what is effectively the Bentley back straight. So instead of normally approaching Montreal, rounding Montreal and accelerating hard and away down towards Palmas, and then later on rounding the right-hander and back onto the Bentley back straight, the 200 circuit, you exit Montreal and immediately, instead of straightening up and carrying on down to Palmas, you flick the bike right over to the left and then onto the Bentley back straight. So this section here is what we're going to talk about. So the approach from Ritchie's down to Montreal is exactly the same. Braking hard, tipping the bike into the apex, staying off the throttle and allowing the bike to fall in towards the kerb. And just when you get to the end of the apex kerb on the right, this is where things change. Now straight in front of you is effectively what you want to call a chicane, a right left chicane which takes you onto the back straight so instead of at this point picking up the throttle and developing it for more and more progressively as the bike comes up right onto the straight here what you'll do is you'll do a progressive acceleration and then perhaps ease back on the throttle without closing it as you change direction from the right over to the left and once you reach the apex of the left develop the throttle onto the straight so from this point here the end of the apex curve, you look into the distance and then you'll see the apex of the left which takes you onto the back straight. So this is the normal approach using the Montreal as, as it were on the 300 circuit, heavy braking all the way into trailing the brake off just before you get to the actual apex of the corner. Keep the throttle closed as you round the corner, letting the bike fall in towards the last part of the curve where the orange section you pick up the throttle to balance the bike and then as you go into the green section here develop the throttle harder and harder and harder up onto the straight we're on the 200 circuit as i said the approach is exactly the same braking hard deep into the corner trailing it off leave the throttle closed and allow the bike to fall in towards the apex of the corner normally you would then pick the throttle up and continue to develop onto the straight but what we start to look for at this apex is the next apex over on the left, creating what is in effect a chicane. It's a good way to think of it, to be fair, is it's a tight right part of the chicane and then a more open left up onto the straight. So the exit, the left out onto the straight, is a lot faster than the actual rounding of Montreal itself. So once you reach the apex of Montreal, pick up the throttle, and depend, it, it's largely dependent on what sort of bike you're on. If you're on a low capacity bike, you basically, from the apex here, can accelerate all the way around the corner and through onto the straight. Um, if you're on a more powerful bike, there's an element of acceleration and then perhaps constant throttle to get you to the left apex. And then that's where you continue to develop the throttle out onto the straight. Watching, of course, for the short drift out curve out on the right.